Grayman is supported by Patreon. Donate now and receive special early access. Hello, hello, hello. I am the Gray Man, and welcome back to Mega Man 4. This is this is going to be kind of a trippy series, uh, since I don't have a lot of trivia or history. I'm, I'm just kind of enjoying the game at this point. And I hope you guys uh, will be enjoying it with me. Oh, uh, one second. I do have a thing that I do have to uh, read off. Um, Manai Fuji, that is the composer for uh, Mega Man 4. Um, and I've been looking this up uh, a little bit ahead of time before I get to the next games. But as I said in Mega Man 3, I was really... Oh, shit. I was really delighted to see that a bunch of the composers uh, for the Mega Man series have been um, women. Um, and not only that, they've had extensive careers uh, do composing video game music. Um, Manai, in particular, uh, went on to work... Uh, for Breath of Fire, the first one, when it first, when it came out on the Super Nintendo. And uh, they brought her and a couple of the other composers, uh, male and female, uh, brought them back for uh, Mega Man 10 when they finally released that. So, I probably have a bit of a false impression. I kind of had the this idea that the game industry of the 80s and 90s especially in Japan, was, like, very homogenous when it came to gender. Like, um... So, I don't know. I'm just kind of happy to see that I was disproven on that notion. I am fighting a torpedo-shooting hippo. I can cross this off the list of shit that I didn't think I would do today. Are we supposed to be on the planet Saturn right now? Just to... <laughs> Like, having a guy centered around rings is already kind of a... a trippy concept. What? And that was an embarrassing death. Um... Oh, I'm back here, son of a... Ah, uh, oh, whatever. Bah! I gotta fight that hippo again. That is one thing about this, uh, stage in particular, is that it is just like... A wa- yeah, Fucking... Why is, why is Ringman stage turning out to be my kryptonite? I've just been breezing through a bunch of this game. Ah, I did it again! No! Okay. Shoot the cannons first, then go up. There. Ah, got a little bit of spit on my monitor from that kind of annoyance. Yeah, see, these guys are just regular annoying. I can kind of, I can kind of deal with this. I just kind of bring up the outer space thing because supposedly, um, and I don't know if this was just like from the box art or if this was from something else, but supposedly in Mega Man 3, you were supposed to be going to different planets uh, to fight the robot masters and collect the elements. Which just kind of introduces a... A little bit of lore to the story that I... Wasn't sure of. Whoop! Oh, okay. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Hippo. This hippo is hungry for vengeance. And just another example of how... Okay, so... Wait, hold on. So they have the outer space... Theme for this level. Which, I get that. It's kind of like the the rings of Saturn or whatever. But then, all of a sudden, they're just... They just introduce a missile-shooting hippo into the, mi into, into the mix. I just get the feeling that some designer at Capcom was just, like, really proud of his, like, hippo design. And they, they wanted to include it, but they just kind of, uh... Weren't sure what to do. See, this guy makes sense! And then we go right back into fighting another hippo! <laughs> Hippos in space. Hippos in space. If he had a space hippo that was big enough, would he be able to have like his uh his own orbit? He would have his own like little hippo satellites. 
or if we go by Hungry Hungry Hippo rules, you have like uh, Hungry Hungry Hippos in space, and then all the marbles are kind of their, uh, are kind of their uh, moons or stars or whatever. Where the hell am I going with this train of thought? I have no idea. Uh, Rush, you want to offset the awkwardness by playing Lakeside Park? Thanks, buddy. Oh, there's Eddie! Hey, Eddie! And you've given me nothing useful! Thanks, Eddie! <laughs> that's kind of... That's kind of Eddie's want in life, is just not giving me anything useful. Friggin' Eddie. Never comes through in a pinch. Ah, fuck off! No! YouTube. Ah, see, these things go the other way. Trying to, trying to shake me up. Trying to shake me down. Get me off my game. I'm not gonna be off my game. I'm not even a game. You're a game. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna spout bullshit for the rest of this episode and just kind of hope it makes sense. Whee! Oh. Um, and another thing that I kind of forgot to mention, this is the first game with the Mega Buster, and this has to be the most overpowered version of the Mega Buster that they've had in the entire franchise. Um, and they got rid of it for, uh, Mega Man's 9 and 10. Um, I don't know if they got rid of it for 11, because like I said, part of the reason I decided to start doing this series was kind of like hyping myself up for Mega Man 11. So I don't know what's going on in that game. Um, but I'm kind of sad they did, uh, because they kind of, on the other hand, in Mega Man 5, it gets really annoying, and I'll talk about it a little bit more once I get to that game. I am probably going to die in this playthrough. Um, like, they included a thing, they even advertised it in Nintendo Power, where they said that every enemy in the game can be killed with the Mega Buster. And so, that kind of disinclined um, certain players to using the sub-weapons creatively. Uh, because, you know, one of the biggest things about Mega Man is the fact that you get these cool extra weapons. And so why would you do that when your standard weapon is the strongest thing you have, and is effective in fighting against everything? So I don't know, I can, I can kind of see where they're coming from. I think there's probably a middle ground that you could have hit. Um, and your mileage may vary on whether or not Mega Man 5 uh, actually did that. I don't know. I, I, I kind of don't want to talk about it a little bit too much until I get to that game because I kind of feel like I'm, you know, I'm, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Yeah, seriously, look at this, this animation. This animation is, like, really good for the NES. I want to get at least one more Robot Master under my belt, so let's go for Dustman. <laughs> He's like shrugging. He's like, yeah, I'm Dustman. I, I don't know. Just uh, your, your your guess is as good as mine. Um. Oh, that is one cool bit of trivia that I looked up. Uh, the ah. I have nobody but myself to blame there. Um. <laughs> That is one cool thing that I looked up, is that, um, uh, the kid who designed Dustman, um, and I'll have to look up his name, um, or it, it'll, it'll just be in the credits, I can, uh, they, uh, they became a professional manga artist, and, um, they've been, uh, illustrating One Punch Man for a while, so, I don't know, how cool is that? Like, as a kid, you get a Mega Man robot, and then you grow up and become an adult, and you get to work on a famous manga like One Punch Man. Now I gotta sing a bit of the theme song. One punch! Uh, wouldn't be Mega Man without a big bouncy bastard, although that guy's a little bit easier to kill. Ooh. Oops. These guys look like angry ladybugs. Can, can we see another one? Is there another one over here? Yeah, there he is. Me, make a wish for death. <laughs> Or maybe it, maybe it is supposed to look like an insect? I always assumed that the thing at the bottom was, like, angry teeth or something. Like, it's just like, me. I don't know. I, it, we have weird robot designs, and then you have, like, my weird ideas about them. Hi, Eddie, do you have anything useful? Oh, you do! Okay. I'm, I'm sorry I made fun of you before. Eh... Uh... 
Oh, I This is stressful as shit, but I, I, I have to admit, I love this part. This is a this is a really cool idea. Yep. I'm fighting through his refuse. Like this actually kind of makes you do a little bit of strategy of movement. You don't see that a ton in Mega Man. <laughs> and I keep spawning a new hard hat, dude. Oh, what's up? <laughs> I'm just I'm just waking him up from his nap. <laughs> oh, I'm awake. <laughs> I'm awake and now I'm dead. Oh, um, and I had somebody in the comments uh kind of mention to me, so I made a joke at the end of Mega Man Three where it reveals that. Fireman's purpose was supposed was that he was supposed to be a waste disposal robot. And I'm like, I thought that was a weird thing to do with your garbage. To, yeah, here we go. To just set your garbage on fucking fire. Um, for whatever reason, apparently a lot of waste disposal services in Japan are just really into just incineration. They just burn a ton of shit, like, uh, when they just want to get rid of it. So... I don't know if you could call that exactly environmentally sound, but that's just kind of how Japan works. They just burn shit when they want to get rid of it. So, I stand corrected. He's gonna clean my clock! <laughs> or maybe not, he's already dead. <laughs> Fucking dust, man, everybody. And, uh... With that, I think I'm going to call this episode here. So uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, we'll move on to something else.